Good morning again, guys. This is Mihai from pipsandzips.com. We're going to start um, our usual um, pound dollar and pound yen analysis. Just for those of you guys who are new, uh, we're only looking at these two pairs. And what we're going to do is uh, form a top-down analysis on um, these two pairs, uh, starting with the daily chart and see if there are any trading scenarios for this uh, session. And then uh, we're going to look at the rainbow charts to get a different uh, view. And um, finally, we're going to see um, in between these two um, strategies what we have uh, on for today and uh, possibly for swing trading. So let's start with pound dollar. All right, let's start with uh, pound dollar. And we're looking at uh, the weekly chart. Uh, actually, before I do that, let me just um, browse through my charts to see the last analysis. All right. Now, this is what we looked at um, last week. We were looking at a bullish uh, wave, if I'm not mistaken. All right. Well, lots of development since, uh, since then. We're going to start the analysis uh, fresh today anyway. But this is actually the wave that we wanted to see over. And apparently the five-wave formation with um, a divergence uh, did indeed give us a first strong bounce, about 200 pips right around that uh, top. So we were saying, if you remember last week, that we are in a, in a bullish trend. Uh, there was no doubt about that at the time, but uh, it lacked the momentum of, um, say, that, that signals continuation. And in fact, this very big area of resistance around 61, uh, from 61.12 to 61.60 did provide our, uh, our resistance. I think uh, right now we have a major bounce here, as you can see. This week also we had some bearish price action. Uh, we'll see you know, on a clean chart in a moment uh, what we're looking at. Okay, it's a previous level of support, as you can see which was before that even a resistance, and now again, it's a resistance. Mm -hmm. Rocky, this is, um, oh, you're, you're referring to this? This is an indicator showing uh, the alignment, that the order of the moving averages um, on my chart on each time frame, a certain uh, set of moving averages which I can adjust. And this indicator right here towards the, at the top of the screen is a proprietary indicator uh, that I developed myself, which is um, measuring the momentum across um, six charts for each pair, and I'm uh, I assign a different weight to to each um, of well each configuration on each chart. So um, basically, I'm giving more uh, weight to the four hour and um, and fifteen minutes charts as uh, I find them to be, um, let's say, the the most important uh, very short-term uh, chart, the 15-minute chart, and the, the most important uh, chart for swing trading, which is the four-hour chart, not too large, not too small. Anyway, let's get back to our clean chart. Let's do um, an analysis um, starting from scratch, so we'll see how this um, becomes. All right, we're looking at... Uh, the big picture now, the uh, weekly chart, and I'm going to start um, with the main levels of support resistance as they are um, obvious on this chart. We're looking at a very big 167 level. It's basically one big resistance across, uh, I think, about uh, three years now. Okay, and we're looking at a bearish wave. I'm not going to actually trade this, guys. I'm simply uh, building up my analysis. And you will see that um, at some point in between uh, what we talk, uh, there will be trading scenarios that uh, arise because the arguments are actually building up. I, I don't want to start with a bias. I want to, to start with a um, an open mind, see what the chart has to say, and only then once uh, we have some good reasons, some uh, solid base for our um, setups, then we will conclude whatever the chart 
uh, says at this point. Okay, there's no point starting with a, a conclusion already. So um, just uh, simply um, plotting the main uh, the main lines on the chart. Now this, for instance, here is not really a support level. It's an area of support. You can see that um, when when price enters this area of approximately 100 pips, this is where the bounces happen here as a resistance, here as support, again as support, and once again as support about two months back. All right, we see that the break of the trend line, which defines, by the way, this wave, we are looking at a bearish wave, is now being retested. So it makes sense from the perspective of the weekly chart that we have a rejection right here. So that means this level will become an important level on our chart and in our analysis. This will be, I'm going to start uh, with the top. I think I'm going to uh, plot a resistance area here as well. Going to be a larger area this time. You can see I'm trying to catch the tops, the top of, of the previous formations, these bottoms. These, actually, these uh, tops, you can see that the, the, the high was 61.51, but the close was 59.69. Uh, That's quite a big difference, about 200 uh, pips between the close and the peak of this, um, the, uh, of, of the spike of each candle. We're interested in this area as an area of rejection. That's where we're going to look for um, maybe a very small bullish moves or larger and more um, daring uh, moves uh, with what we consider to be the main trend, the bearish trend. Okay? Since we already saw the break of trend line becoming support, I'm going to place this trend line on the current wave. Now this is our weekly wave. This is where the weekly wave is going to be proven, um, it, it, it's going to be broken at the break of the trend line. That will be the first um, let's say that the first sign, those of you who are not uh, new to, to this webinar know um, what I understand by a break of trend or a change in trend. I'm looking for uh, basically uh, two elements, a break of a trend line and a break of a support resistance line. That means a break of a dynamic level and a break of a static level. Both of them confirming the same thing. Usually it's the, the dynamic line that breaks faster because it's closer to the price, but when the horizontal lines break, that's when you actually know. Multiple bounce area. Yeah, well, um, Rocky, it, it makes sense to see such volatility at such levels. Uh, I was taken a little bit uh, by surprise um, by that drop in, the, in Euro. I have to say, I, I actually took only one trade on the Euro uh, on that uh, drop, and that was right at the very bottom of the whole thing. So... Uh, I managed to, to get nice profits on longs against the trend uh, at key levels, but not uh, on uh, on the trend on the bearish trend. Uh, that's mainly because I I didn't I was not in sync with this move, and I was looking for uh, for something else. Again, this is why we we shouldn't as traders uh, have these preconceived ideas what the market should do. In in fact, the market can do anything, and it's our responsibility to follow what it's doing, not just assume something's going to happen. Okay, The market does not care about what we assume. So let's see, at this point here, what do we have as a technical level? So we have a bearish wave. We will see what sort of wave we're looking at. Okay, This could be a bearish wave that will continue and give us another uh, test of 153 and continuation or a break. But since we are looking at a bearish wave, the trend line is actually a falling trend line above price. That means we are on this weekly chart um, right now in a bearish wave. The most interesting uh, part about all this is this formation here. Clearly a rejection um, reversal formation on the uh, pound dollar weekly. Not only we got rejected last week and we formed this very nice doji, but it seems like this week we're getting the same thing at least uh, as far, and we are on Thursday. So, well, unless we see a dramatic change in uh, in uh, dynamic, uh, we're probably going to close again uh, below 160. 
So that will confirm that most likely we're looking at a temporary uh, top in place around here. All right. Uh, there's no point uh, trying to go uh, too deep into this weekly chart. Um, I'm not trading uh, that uh, large time frames anyway. Okay. Sorry. Uh, now let's see what we have. It's quite interesting um, to compare the current wave, okay, this small move, with what happened right before it and what happened right here. And I think uh, if you guys remember last week, we were talking about this wave and we uh, agreed that it has the shape, the dynamic, and uh, actually the typical level of, a, of an impulse. This wave does not retrace anything. It's uh, moving in the direction of a bigger move. Here you go. And the wave right before it was a typical retracement. Actually, everything falls into place in the idea that we have a one, two, three, four, and five with divergence, retracement A, B, C, one, two, three, four, and five once again. Now this means we have three waves, which most likely are uh, complete. Definitely this wave is complete. We have the two rules, the two conditions, sorry, of, um, of a breaking trend already met. That's break of dynamic line, break of static line. Here you go. So basically, it started um, being a bullish uh, wave at on this candle, and it even gave us a good entry point right back at the breakout point. Uh, typical uh, break and retest uh, scenario. Okay. Since then, I think I'm not mistaken if I assume that the two waves. The two uh, impulses of this formation are about the same size and shape. All these things, guys, are arguments in favor of a certain scenario. You see? Approximately the same size and shape. Now, what I have in mind is, and we're going to just state these arguments one by one, okay? And just draw the conclusion that's um, obvious. Exactly, Rocky. On that pullback, can we enter next day or what? Basically, uh, if I'm just go, I'm just going to give you now the um, the entries based on on the daily chart. I'm not trading the daily charts, but since we are on the daily and uh, let's assume we are trading directly on the daily chart, what is to be done? There are two things. One, an aggressive entry around 38.2 of this move. Let's see if that 38.2 is hit. That's what I call the aggressive entry uh, on the wave B. Uh, okay, that's precisely the 38.2. But sometimes uh, when you are trading like this, you might be uh, you might want to not use uh, the levels um, down to the last pip. You see, uh, the, actually the resistance became support. And let's assume that you would have probably missed that exact perfect entry. Now it's easy to look back on the chart and say yes we could have done this. But in fact you had a, a much better opportunity at the end of this candle. You're not the first in the market at this point but this is a confirmed entry clearly confirmed by a break of the previous high. The support, the resistance becoming support is now a fact. Okay, So you, you're not talking about assumptions, you're talking facts. The resistance became support, that's for sure, at this point when you enter it at, on this candle here. That's correct, Rocky. So you have a close above the previous high. So according to another setup I use for the retracement, in fact, sometimes I don't even know if it's a retracement or an impulse, but I use the same rule. Because the breakout will tell me that I can go long at the close of the candle, careful about candle closing, and not just entering on a spike. You don't enter directly at this level 58, let's say 5860, uh, just because it's five pips above the previous high. Because pairs like pound dollar and pound uh, and the euro dollar can uh, hurt you badly if you if you do this consistently. You have to actually know that there, there is a breakout. If there's a breakout, then you're probably safe. But if it's not, you're b buying the exact top. So. This is why I'm saying that uh, the entry is actually at the end of the candle with a stop somewhere 
down here, of course, the stop is, is huge, and the risk to reward is not that great because basically your, um, your target will have to be about the same size as this wave. Okay, so you're going with a clearly confirmed setup, high probability, maybe, I don't know, maybe 70% that you're going to be correct, but risk to reward one to one, so not so great. There's always for me this uh, give and take when it comes to risk to reward versus probability of success. You can't have 80% probability and five to one risk to reward. It just doesn't work that way. Uh, I mean, if if you find a system that uh, has that sort of uh, of statistics, please give me a heads up because I would like to buy that one. All right. Now, what happens right now is we have. First of all, you we zoomed on the daily and we see that the resistance is somewhere inside this um, this area. Okay, of course, one of the reasons why we we um, drew this area is because we saw uh, the top around here uh, on the weekly chart. But this level is also means something on the weekly chart as we just saw. So we have what do we have actually so far? We have break of trend line. Where did that happen? right here, break of the dynamic level. So that happened pretty quickly on that uh, candle, I think, from, um, if I'm not mistaken, from Friday. Pull back, all right, and then we have the static level, which is right here. I'm not going to draw it. I don't want to complicate the chart. And yesterday, we had close, clear close below this 59.61, so no doubt about it. We are looking at a breakout point here. So that means the shift has turned, has uh, has changed to short, and this is the active wave. We just have to determine right now what sort of wave we're looking at. From a perspective of a daily chart, of course, if you are trading this long term, you want to know where it is it going to go, maybe 150, maybe lower, but I'm not going to give a setup that gives a 1,000 pips uh, target with, uh, I don't know, 400 pips stop. It's very hard to follow. So we're going to have to look closer to the market. But we take the conclusion that we have on this daily chart that we are in a new wave. Okay, we have the, the MACD crossing down as well on the daily chart. And most importantly, we have an impulse here and we have a retracement wave here on ABC. There's very little chance, I think, right now, very low probability that this is actually something different. So we are looking most likely at another impulse starting somewhere around 160, How that fits with the, with the overall picture is, for now, irrelevant as far as I'm concerned, because I'm looking at a wave that, regardless whether it's an impulse or not, is still confirmed and still has to give a certain amount of pips. Okay, before it's um, it's proven, uh, let's say, broken. All right, and we'll see exactly where that is uh, anyway. It's always good to know where is it that y you know you are wrong. All right, now, okay, we're getting close to um, the shorter term charts, and we have something quite um, different, <laughs> actually, on this four-hour chart. We are looking at a bearish wave, that is true, that's confirmed by this chart, and we have the trend line right here. We're going to uh, check this trend line uh, later, maybe next week, to see if it's been broken. Now, remember, we're looking at um, a move that's still within the boundaries of a bearish trend. Trend line has not been broken. Horizontal level has not been broken. This level, uh, 59.93, it's a psychological level as well. How to judge the strength of the wave? Rocky, the strength of the wave is given by the the nature of the wave. What sort of wave is it? Impulsive or corrective? Now, of course, uh, the theory is more complicated than the, just that. But in in uh, in a nutshell, an impulsive wave is one that goes in the direction of the main trend. It's longer. It's stronger. And uh, it's usually it lasts longer in time. Okay, uh, the dynamic of the wave is more aggressive. You see um, a bigger candle, less retracement, uh, less choppiness. When you have retracement, it's basically uh, price action uh, doing an up and down move without gaining much. 
and getting stuck in a narrow range for a long period of time. And in general, choppy price action up and down. Uh, sometimes it happens to have um, practically price being stuck in a narrow range. Uh, you you judge that according to the length of the move. Uh, yes, Rocky. Yes, but it's actually quite complicated to explain in a, in a few words. Um, visually. Well, let me just give you an example from this chart. Uh, just remove some of the elements from here. Or better even, uh, you know what, Rocky? I'll just remember your question. And uh, as soon as I find uh, an example on the on the chart I'm going to look at next, I'm going to show you uh, exactly what I'm talking about. I'm quite sure there will be uh, some chart somewhere uh, showing exactly what I was just saying. We have right here something that we have to to take uh, very seriously, and that's a support point at 159. Now, <clears throat> there are two things I want to point out here. One is the technical fact itself that we have a support, a double bottom, which was tested again, and it failed. All right? At 158, uh, it's actually 159. And notice that it's just 100 bits away from the round number. I have this theory regarding round numbers um, that uh, actually on pairs like pound dollar and euro dollar, they work very well if if you trade those numbers, but with inverse psychology. That means if you are getting very close to, to a round number and you think that's exactly where the market is going to stop, in fact, you can actually trade the opposite of what you would think and you will have a better chance. I think out of uh, five trades taken um, with with such um, considerations in mind, I think um, I'm right about three or four times out of five. So I think it, it works. Uh, it can be uh, turned into a theory, uh, it, it, and it works at all levels. When it's um, when, when we're talking about a round number like let's say uh, 158.80. Usually the market stops about 25 pips or 30 pips away from there. That's the absolute bottom or top. When you're talking about a really large, very round number like 16000, then the market will stop about 100 to 150 pips away from that point. Higher or lower, depending on where the market goes. In our case here, we have 160 as the main level. You can see here the pink um, color of the weekly level. Uh, showing us that this is indeed a resistance, okay? But this can be a support as well, okay? Remember that the fact that you see price action below 160 on this four-hour chart doesn't mean that the level is broken on the weekly, okay? So this can actually turn into support. All, all we have to do is see another 100 pips up and uh, the the weekly candle will be very bullish, Okay? More important, I think, for short-term trading is this level. I'm going to make it even more um, clear. All right. I took that aggressive long on the euro today on uh, somewhat similar um, uh, reasons. I wanted. I, I just played a, a very important level of support against the trend, but with very tight stop and worked out beautifully. I think this uh, GU uh, has about the same, uh, let's say, dynamic, okay? We have, first of all, we have divergences on the indicators, which in themselves don't mean anything unless they are confirmed uh, by something else. But we are confirmed at this point uh, with something else. We have two hours left in this four-hour candle, maybe on other charts, maybe even less. And in any case, if we continue to stay above 159, uh, uh, 40, 159, 50 for the next few hours, this will be confirmed as a support. It doesn't necessarily mean that we break up uh, beyond um, the current level of resistance at 159.90, but that level becomes a quite uh, obvious target. Okay, now let's look uh, the other indicators, Pat. Let's see. Um, this is MACD. This is uh, a rate of change. And this is a Trix. Okay? Trix and MACD are sort of interchangeable. It's about the same thing. And they're giving a slower picture of what, of, of the market momentum. The rate of change is always different. 
it's always uh, moving faster. It gives you a um, quicker heads up about the possible reversal, but only when uh, the two of them agree and the rate of change changes to the signal of the uh, MACD or tricks, only then uh, I find uh, the indicators to be useful. In any case, I, I'm not really using indicators that much. It's only this four-hour chart because I like uh, having lots of elements on this four-hour chart, but I'm not using them for entries anyway. So it's simply for analysis, simply for giving me a bit more probability on one side or the other. If the indicators are, um, let's say, a bit confusing, I just dump the whole um, idea of using them. I, I don't even take them into account at all. Price is the ultimate indicator. That's what uh, I care about. And just because the, an indicator is uh, telling me to do something, that doesn't mean I'm, I'm actually going to do it. All right. If, it, if the indicators, on the other hand, are agreeing to um, higher authorities like, uh, let's say, um, support resistance um, breakout or in our case here, support uh, at this 59 level, then uh, they start to look interesting. Uh, that means um, we have a good basis, not only from the indicators, which are always lagging, by the way, uh, but from price itself. Look at this. Uh, I haven't uh, made available this uh, indicator yet. Uh, I think I can give you an email. Uh, because yeah, I, I know what you're what you're talking about. It's really not mine to give. Uh, someone else made this for me, and um, I think uh, you'll have to ask that person because I'm really not authorized. I'm just using it uh, myself. But if uh, the person agrees to share it, uh, of course, uh, no problems at all. All right. Now let's get a bit closer to um, to what's going on right now. I think uh, let me just. For a second, uh, switch to the euro. Okay, not bad. I think I'm over 100 pips on this move. I was uh, thinking that it might um, stop around here, but it looks like uh, man, it's really going. I am interested to close my position around here. I have uh, 100 and uh, about 110 pips on this trade, and I'm actually interested to close. Uh, very simple reason. I'm sorry, guys, to uh, switch to something else, but very quickly, very, very quickly, why am I interested here to close this position? This is the reason. Uh, it's not so clear. One second, please. Why? Because it hit the magic 78% Fib retracement level. <laughs> That's just it. That's the reason. No other reason. Because this... 78 Fib level is something uh, so powerful, and I've taken so many good trades uh, based on this uh, Fibonacci level that I've come to trust it, um, whether it's for stops, but especially for targets. You know that something's going on when the market gets very close or touches this 78 Fib level. Now, if it breaks here, uh, we're probably looking at uh, rally all the way to my uh, final target at 138.70. So, guys, I've been long since right here at 76, and this uh, basically I'm in my session now, so I'm my other computer is off. Uh, I will have to um, to take up just a few moments break to close this position. But actually, um, I want to point out in real time right now that. This level, not to mention it's very close to this 138 psychological level, so we might see bounces uh, somewhere in the next hour. Now, do not trade uh, against uh, the 78 Fib and actually take it into account. A break right now is a very serious push through the 137.90 level. That might uh, mean we're looking at a rally, a very strong rally for the rest of the day. So uh, you have an answer both ways whether it's breaking or it's stopping. If it stops, it doesn't mean that it will drop. It just means that the market will take a, a break. So this for me is a get out uh, signal. And uh, guys, just I just need a few moments. I'll be uh, right with you. Just uh, closing this position, uh, I'm satisfied. I apologize, uh, it's going to take only uh, about 30 seconds. Am 
might even get a bonus uh, <laughs> by closing it above the 90 level, where I usually um, close. Okay, 120 uh, pips on this trade, not bad at all. All right. I'm just going to let my subscribers know. Guys, we're actually sharing these trades uh, via my service every day. Uh, it's uh, just a messenger uh, alert service, but works um, pretty well. All right. So just letting everyone know what's going on and back to the chart. Again, uh, my apology for this uh, break. That's right, Naive Trader. That's right. Maybe some of them um, are in the room. Uh, that's correct, that's correct. Uh, I think it was um, probably the best trade in, in quite some time, 100 plus pips, 120 pips. I usually take about 20, 30, uh, getting in and out. Uh, I like that sort of dynamic, it's just uh, consistent with uh, how I trade. But um, I just wanted this one uh, to, I, I wanted to keep this one, I was confident in it. And I, I'm still actually uh, confident it will break this 138.20 uh, level eventually. I might enter later in the day around uh, 37.60. Um, as much as I like to talk about the uh, euro dollar, it's my um, most traded pair. I um, have to get back to the pound dollar. And let's see what we have right here. It seems to, to be a pretty good um, movement in uh, cable as well. And let's just see. Uh, I haven't looked at it today at all. Um, just a, a few elements of short-term trading, and now I'm just simply going to look at the short-term scenarios. And at the end, um, I think in about uh, five, ten minutes. Okay, I still have ten minutes, so there's still time. We'll look at the, the rainbow chart and we'll draw conclusions about what else can be uh, traded today on uh, pound dollar. All right. So when when you look at um, the short-term charts. I, I like having the levels that I just uh, mentioned, the, the weekly levels. I like to see them painted on my chart, so I would know that somewhere around there, uh, there is uh, there might be some big rejection or there might be some um, intense uh, price action. Okay, I know the colors. There's the color code for each chart, so I know that these are weekly. Okay, you also have support resistance uh, lines uh, of basically um, all the time frames visible at the same time on the chart. So I know that, for instance, when uh, an hourly level coincides uh, more or less with a weekly level, okay, that means something's going, it's, it's going to happen around there. Nice trader, I, I tried the, the idea of, of um, session because I had a trading room, but uh, it's just that I cannot be in front of my charts all day long. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't suit my my um, way of life, and I cannot be there all the time. I'm simply uh, sharing with them all the entries and exits and uh, all the, the um, basically everything that I do via instant messenger. So it gives me the freedom to actually do anything I want because uh, sometimes I look at the chart for only two minutes and uh, there's a trade going on. And um, no, there are no charts, Ray. Uh, there's there's a daily analysis where you get an idea what uh, I'm doing, so you will know um, if you look at the chart because I'm usually following uh, that analysis. Uh, for instance, today I, I had this, and there's um, always a long and short. Um, there there's one long scenario and a one short scenario. I'm trying to argue both ways, so I would keep an open mind about what's going on. So I won't be stuck in the idea of going long or going short. Today, for instance, I was long. I got stopped out for about five, uh, seven pips. Then I was uh, short. I closed because I did not want to expose too much. Short again for about 20 pips of profit and about 120 pips now. Sometimes you just um, have lots of, um, of um, moves up and down, up and down, because I'm, o I'm only trading the euro dollar. Uh, any other trades I'm only doing on my own uh, on my own account. Can just uh, just visit uh, my website. It's uh, pipsandtips.com. I will give it give it to you guys at the end of the session. And there is also a three days trial, so you you don't have to um, if, if you for any reason you you don't like the the system or you just can't manage to to make uh, 
to make the most of the signals, uh, of course, um, you you will not be uh, charged at all. That's, the idea is to to use it if it's useful for you. And I don't like just giving signals. I mean, uh, go, go long now and, and uh, close now. I, I like sharing why a certain trade is taken. Okay? Because uh, some of the subscribers are not even taking my trades. They are just interested in uh, what I have to say about the why a certain trade is taken or what sort of trading I'm doing that day. Is it uh, um, scalping up and down? Is it a positional trade one direction? Is it uh, a swing trade like what I tried to do today uh, and it was successful? Um, something like that because they, they are following their own systems. And also, uh, there's a possibility for you to actually get to know the system yourself and to give your own signal. And uh, I like that because I noticed that most of the students, even though they can uh, trade by themselves uh, and do exactly what I'm doing without um, any input, they choose to to remain um, subscribed because, well, it's just funner to, to trade together and... Uh, Especially if you know what the other person is doing, you you get to um, to get a heads up um, without maybe looking at the chart. Uh, maybe you're just too lazy to analyze one day. Even though on my side, I I sort of have to. <laughs> All right, let's get back to this uh, pound dollar. Now, how do how do I start? Let's say we're looking at a short term trade on uh, pound dollar. Let's just get back to the objective of the of the session is to give a scenario to trade today, right? If there is no such uh, trade, then we'll have to say that. But let's see. I think there there might be something. Uh, let's just build up the arguments for a trade. So we're looking at first of all, there might be some resistance here. So this tells me that the current level could be vulnerable. Okay. On the other hand, we have very nice divergence on the MACD with MACD crossed up. So that means it's already pointing up at this point. So the divergence is confirmed. There was a lower low with something that looks like a triple bottom here. That looks pretty good uh, as a stable support. We can take this as being a stable support. All right. Now let's see something else. Let's get closer to the, the chart. Do we have anything... Um, more short term or anything based on waves that can tell us where to go in. All I want is something to match one of my scenarios. Okay? Uh, short or long, it doesn't matter. Okay. Now, this would be the trend line break, the first trend line break. I think uh, it's pretty clear. All right. You know what? There weren't many uh, chances to go into this long. Uh, the only chance was at this retracement. But judging on the shallow retracement that we had, I wouldn't have caught this one. I would have waited for a deeper correction here. Now, this is a Fibonacci uh, placed on um, the last move up right before we had this uh, breakout. And the retracement was 50%. 50%. I would have waited for more. I would have waited all the way down here and uh, most likely missed the aggressive entry. The aggressive entry means you enter at 61. Uh, let me just adjust this. There's an error here. Okay. And now this is the 61.8. This is where the signal, uh, the, the, um, the aggressive entry is at 159.11. Okay, 159.11. And the stop will have to be right below that 78. I'm always talking about <clears throat> in between 78 and 100 percent. So uh, the trade would have been uh, long at 59.15. It was not hit today. No, 59.15, just a little bit uh, below, but it wouldn't have been hit. Uh, stop at 158.90, somewhere in between the 78 and the 100, and the target would be somewhere around 127 extension. So uh, it will have to be around. 59.80, something like that, 59.80. That's about 70 pips of uh, target with a risk of about 25. Definitely very good risk to reward. You're always getting very good risk to reward on the aggressive trades. Like the one I had today, I had my initial stop at 30 pips. 
then immediately after entry, I, I practically um, had the, the trading profit from the very first few uh, minutes, and um, that was um, the moment when I switched to 20 pips stop, and then uh, immediately to 10 pips, and the risk to reward was very, very good, but the trade was aggressive. 38% Fibonacci, that's right. Now, the second way to enter is at the breakout, all right? Uh, and that brings us to the current moment. Actually, hold on, this is starting to, to look interesting. Um, it's a very strong move. It just uh, popped above uh, the 60 level, and we are at 75. Okay, we're at the 75 level. This is actually the signal. Uh, this candle is showing uh, the breakout that I want. And uh, in this case, uh, Rocky, since you're interested in the, in the how uh, to take the trade, uh, more than the trade itself, basically when you're entering aggressively here, you want your stop to be somewhere where the wave would be denied, would be, would be proven wrong. At this point, the wave it cannot be proven wrong anymore. It's clear that, uh, that this is actually a wave going up, and clearly this is a retracement. That's an absolute fact at this point, that this was a retracement, because the wave right after is bigger, and the wave right before is bigger as well. So it's definitely something smaller in between two big waves. But the entry is right here, by the way. I'm not happy with the risk reward, though. So uh, check out the process of deciding on a trade. Just knowing that it's bull or bear doesn't necessarily make it uh, a good trade. Now this is your first wave, the one that is the base for, for what you're trying to do. You're trying to, to buy the breakout. Ideally you have to buy somewhere around here, somewhere around this level, right at the breakout. Of course you want the candle to close, but if it closes so much higher than where where you want to buy it might be too um, too far away from your stop but man this is turning into a real rally okay the euro is pulling back <laughs> I'm hoping I closed exactly at the top um, all right you just start calculating what's the risk, what's the reward. The reward will be shown by this wave, and you can extend it usually a little bit, but not too much. Too much. So you have the resistance here, you have the, you're already in the uh, area of resistance on the weekly chart, so sensitive, sensitive uh, zone, okay? Your target is about 20 pips higher than where price is right now, while the stop is somewhere about 50 pips away. So that gives you a risk to reward clearly not in your favor. That's correct. I mean, what are you going to do? Are you, you're going to, to um, buy for only 20 pips, uh, risking 80? That doesn't make much sense. And you see, price is advancing. And I'm sorry that, well, you, if, if you look at to, to buy into this trade, you, you're just looking at price going and going, and there's nothing you can do. But really, there's nothing you can do. And uh, when something like this happens, you simply have to either take a position with a very, very small uh, lot. Uh, that will not bring you much money, but it will uh, just give you satisfaction psychologically that you are with the, the move. You're not missing uh, on all the action. However, you can't expose a normal position because it's just too far away from your, um, from your stop. The logical stop and the one I'm usually uh, using um, on the waves is right here. So that gives you, <laughs> practically right now, it's an impossible trade. Even at the beginning of this candle, it would have been a bad risk to reward. Yes, it would have been a, a profitable trade and very high uh, probability of success, but the risk to reward is just too, uh, too bad. If you do this consistently, uh, it's not going to work out. You want a balance between risk to reward and um, probability now. Clearly the rally is very strong, but uh, to tell you the truth, I would not buy right now. I wouldn't buy it for the world at this point. 
check out something else. How far are you from the 78 fib? Which incidentally is the 16000 level. Uh, just about 12 pips. And now you can see how well it makes sense uh, to use the 78 retracement with the waves. You see the wave target? This segment right here is exactly the size of this segment. So again, um, I have to state that Elliott waves are the only uh, predictive method uh, as opposed to, to trading indicators. Elliott waves project into the future it might not be a good projection, but it's definitely a projection for uh, what's going to happen next. It's trying to predict, that's for sure. So this is your prediction based on the wave. Unfortunately, even though it's a very good one, personally, even if I had seen the charts, I wouldn't have taken this position. At this point here where the confirmation was, the risk would have been too high. Only if you are lucky to catch uh, this spike Basically, you're not lucky if it, if it uh, goes to 61.8. You're not lucky. You're just following the, your, your system and you're getting uh, well-deserved pips. But sometimes uh, you choose to enter maybe a little bit earlier. That was the only chance to catch everything. But in any case, guys, uh, since there is no uh, scenario to do anything right now, I would say this would be the take profit level. So this is where I would take profits based on two, not two, three levels, three uh, elements. The fact that we are approaching a major weekly resistance. Second and most important, the 78 fib level. Third, the wave target is right exactly here. So uh, if you want to take, uh, to take profit aggressively, that means while the market is moving in your favor, I think this would be the level to do so. All right. Um, I didn't want to do this, I, I didn't want to talk about this, but since, uh, well, we're talking um, technicals and I've done a trade like this today, I, I'm just going to dare to say it. Um, those of you who who have a high risk tolerance and those of you who don't mind risking, uh, I mean, going into risky trades, this is actually a short opportunity, believe it or not. Exactly at 160, uh, let's say 160.01, 160.02 maximum. And let me just simply place here the level where I would say uh, shorts would be interesting. But again, this short is only for those who have the stomach and those who don't mind trading against the trend and those who definitely can respect their stop level. Because the stop cannot be uh, higher than 60.25. So you would risk a total of 25 pips for a target of uh, maybe maybe 30 pips. I would expect a retracement back towards um, here. Actually, it's 59.60. It's the breakout point. I, I see that this is also a support resistance level. Uh, let me just try to push it a little bit higher. You see this? Resistance turn into support, so I would expect some bounce towards the 159.70 level. But this is only interesting if you are shorting right at the 78 fib. Okay, not 10 pips lower, not 20 pips lower. Okay, right there, very aggressive, and you are buy, you are actually you cannot be more against the trend than this. But if you are placing your stop intelligently somewhere around 160.20. You're risking about 20 pips, maybe reducing your exposure as well. That's a wise decision when you're trading a cowboy uh, um, setups like this one. You can go for maybe 30. I don't think the level I mentioned was hit yet. Uh, I was talking 160.01, 59.98 was the top. But guys, just um, one observation, if price uh, drops right now to 159.70 and goes back to 160, in that case, it wouldn't be interesting anymore. Why is this um, the case? Because you do not want the retracement to happen and then you don't want to be to, to go against the trend after a retracement. You want to be there really at the at the first time when that level is hit. So you would catch the first uh, take profit level and the first aggressive short. That's all. 
uh, if it doesn't, then uh, there's no point. It's something really very aggressive. You see, at this point, if, for instance, and again, I'm uh, I'm uh, um, talking about luck because at this point I would have taken it, I would have missed the trade for maybe one pip. Uh, WP, what's that? Uh, my entry would have been uh, 16001. Price did not go there. But you see right now, the bounce is happening. And the bounce is happening at the 78 fib. Uh, the point is, if you are short uh, one, uh, let's say, 59.95 or 98, okay, and you are now at 59.84, 15 pips in profit, you are not allowed to, to lose one pip on this trade anymore. Because you risk 20, you already have 15. You have 15 in your hand, you could close it right now. And if you want to take the full 30 pips uh, that you want to take for this trade, I think stop should be at break even level. That's, I think, the best way to, to trade these very aggressive, super aggressive um, setups. You want to take a risk, but it doesn't mean you have to extend that risk indefinitely. Once you see that there's a chance to cover that risk, maybe take profit. I mean, after all, uh, 15 pips taken um, with a risk of 20 against the trend, uh, clearly against the trend, is not that bad. Okay? Uh, ideally, you should try to follow your plan before you enter the trade and go for 30, but protecting that stop and maybe reducing the stop, okay, that's something that you must do. Yes? Solomon, yes, yes. Uh, it's it's one of the key elements of my trading, by the way. It's uh, it's a key point, I would say. Uh, trend reversal point if there is a trend reversal. Breakout point if there is no reversal. Either way, I I know something. When the market is at 78 fib, I know something. And today, actually, uh, the the thought crossed my mind to buy the euro dollar. Believe it or not, at 136.60, okay, when basically at the exact bottom of the bottom, okay, um, I just did it right after this first candle, okay, and why was that? Let me show you the magic. Here's the magic, guys. The last move up, which has the shape of a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay, the retracement, which basically should have looked like a, an ABC, but it doesn't. It looks more like a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 again. But it stops to the pip at the 78 February retrace. I know uh, it's not really so uh, popularized, this uh, level. Everyone talks about 61.8, 38.2. It's in all the books. But this 78 fib, I think, is way more powerful. Just simply amazing uh, how uh, this level can provide an, a great risk-to-reward trade. And even if you're wrong, because obviously if you're trading here long, you're against the trend any way you put it. It's clearly against the trend, no, no doubt about it. However, the risk would be only 10, 15 pips. No, the reward, you saw the reward. Uh, 120 pips. Just one second, guys. I just want to do something. Just, I'm talking about a trade here, and uh, I don't want this to be uh, just uh, mere talk. Um, I want to show you uh, the actual trade. I just need to update uh, my account statement. I'll be right back. I just to turn off the camera for a few moments. Trying to um, update uh, the statement. should be updated automatically, but it doesn't. All right, and in just a moment, um, I update also the uh, online uh, statement. All right, I think it's done. Uh, let me just uh, put the camera back on. Okay, now this is the model account. Uh, it's what I'm trading with um, with my members every day. This is the results from the last uh, two weeks, I think. And uh, I just updated it. You should be able to see now um, we got about uh, 2% on equity today. On uh, one, oh, I'm surprised. Uh, this is November 3rd. Something's wrong here. <laughs> it cannot be. All right. Now, these, these two are the, the, the two trades. 
the 120 uh, trade that I just closed. It's right here in two hours time and this was uh, I closed it right before entering the session because I did not want to uh, um, I, I actually thought there would be some bounce there so I closed half of the position here half of the position here so I think we can just say that this trade was worth 100 bits exactly uh, on average because uh, 200 pips um, divided by two, 197 divided by 2 that's about 100 pips now this was based uh, on uh, the 136.72 uh, and 81, so I averaged it at 36.76. Uh, this was based on um, the analysis that you can actually uh, receive. Um, it's on Twitter. You just add me today. Um, it's uh, bits and bits. You will see there uh, one of my last posts were was exactly um, that uh, the link to the analysis, and you actually see the reasons why. So on my lot size, uh, I think it's irrelevant to tell you the the exact uh, the actual lot size, but I uh, I trade uh, twice the amount that I have in the account. That means for twenty five thousand twenty five thousand dollars, that's um, a lot size of fifty thousand. So I use a, a base lot of um, a, an actual average of uh, two to one. I trade twice the amount that there is in uh, in the account, and the half lot. Uh, these two trades were taken each half lot. That means um, I traded with leverage one to one. But still, a good trade can give you two percent, two percent with no leverage on two trades. Wicked tips. Um, I can direct you to um, actually. I think um, Vicky or Maud uh, have the link to. To a session from July last year. It's a monthly webinar on uh, um, fxtreet.com, and uh, there you can find um, a description of the system. Okay, and if you want the um, the template, um, it, it's a template. I'm sorry, I think I'm way over my time now, so I will have to stop here. But um, it's it's a system I usually use uh, for analysis, and I, usually during my session on FX Street, um, I take about five ten minutes to look at that. Thank you very much for that, mod. Now I think uh, this will give you a good idea what um, what is the rainbow the, the rainbow template, which is not mine by the way. Uh, oh, this is it. Now uh, I think uh, we have an update here. Um, the pips so, uh, gain for today was not updated. You can see, guys, um, just one uh, last observation that actually the equity curve was positive, even though uh, four days back on Monday I had a really bad um, pip count. That's actually uh, be because I used different lots for different trades according to probability and according to a certain uh, money management plan. And uh, to be honest, I had a really rough week uh, Monday and Tuesday. It's really hard to to get to keep the equity um, going up in spite of um, a lot of technical um, let's say <laughs> glitches in my in my system during those two days. Uh, but today it's actually a very clean um, uh, move, and uh, I think the trades were just uh, crystal clear. Uh, not too many either; just two trades that did all this. And uh, well. I take it as a reward for uh, being patient Monday and Tuesday. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for your patience today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the session. Uh, for anything, thanks, Night Trader. Uh, it was one of my best uh, lately. I'm not usually going for that much. I like going in and out a lot. But, well, it was a good day. Thanks for attending. Thanks for, for participating. For anything, uh, I'll just uh, leave the... A link to my website. You can um, contact me um, through there, and um, please feel free to to sign up for those uh, analysis reports. Uh, absolutely free. Uh, sometimes, you know, um, just uh, getting an idea about a certain level or uh, having a heads up about a certain scenario can be good, regardless of what you are trading. You can be trading your own uh, system. All right. Thanks again. Have a great uh, end of week. Enjoy your weekend, and I'll see you next uh, Thursday.